success of the Advanced Warfighter titles, Ubisoft resurrects their tactical cover-based Ghost Recon franchise with this new installment, taking the battle to the near future in Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Future Soldier. Loaded with impressive futuristic tech, does this game make a lasting impression in the realm of military shooters, or is this ghost just an apparition? Today, me and Voice are gonna review a Ubisoft multi-studio effort. We're talking about Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Future Soldier, continuation of the Gras series, which were one of the first titles to be released on the Xbox 360, a title that I enjoyed a lot. Talking specifically about the story, it didn't leave a really good impression. The first thing to say here is that if you played Battlefield 3 and you played Modern Warfare 3, you can position this story kind of somewhere in between these two. It's not as over go, go, go as Modern Warfare 3, not as bland as Battlefield 3, but it's extremely generic. It's, it's really, really Really derivative. There are some interesting plot points. It's just that the path you take to them, the story, it just seems random. I want to sum up the story behind Future Soldier right now. So Dirty Bomb in Nicaragua leads to Nigerian arms dealer, leads to Moskin coup and Russian splinter cell group. At the beginning, I saw there was a correlation, there was a connection between everything you're doing. And then at some point, I kind of just felt, did we suddenly start doing something else? Is, uh, yeah, it, just, is it connected? It only all came together for me at the end. and Because it, it, it reminded you what happened at the beginning, because <laughs> you forget the game is about 12 hours in length. And I had forgot the events at the beginning, which was supposed to shock you, but it happened so quickly. And then they referenced it at the very end of the game. Very weak story connection. There's even a point in the story, I'm not going to spoil anything, but it's kind of like in Modern Warfare, where there's shock moments for shock value. You. There's a point in the game where they have that, but because the game is so just generic on a story level, you don't even care. The first impressions of Future Soldier, not so hot, but the great thing though is that the gameplay really holds up. All the Ubisoft studios that worked on this did a really good job of making you feel like a ghost. And you have all these really cool gadgets, you have camo in this, you have a drone which you can use to scan the scene, and you can actually play it completely behind the scenes and not be caught once if you want. Or you can go full out assault mode. So there's a lot of really cool gameplay features. It's just the story doesn't really hold up to it. It just feels like the story is just an excuse and a second afterthought to the gameplay. Yep. Now, like you're saying, the gameplay is phenomenal, it's fantastic. You have all these gadgets using the sensors to kind of see where the enemy is hiding and you have the drones for scouting. It really just made you feel like a real elite squad. You were just dominating the enemy. On the negative side though, you could play the game for the most part from a distance having your squad do all the work. So you could feel a little too overpowered at times. It felt that way. And I don't like the fact that the game forces you at some points to play it in a stealth mode. You can't trigger alarms. When you are forced to play a certain way, it kind of defeats the purpose of no, it. I think the problem, with, the problem with your argument is that you can opt, you can go complete stealth, you can use a sync shot system to take out all enemies at one. And it's kind of cool lining them up. You choose four targets and there are completely stealthy sections. It mixes it up because I would not want to play it all assault mode. There's some interesting segments where you basically enter invincible mode or diamond formation where you have to rescue some highly valuable targets. You're running directly into enemy fire. You're killing everybody. Your ammo is unlimited. You have no control over the character. And then you call an airstrike. The whole game should be played in diamond formation. The gameplay thankfully holds up. It actually is fun. I kind of felt it was more like Rainbow Six. The original Gra was much more single player focused. It really does envision the idea of being this elite future squad. Camo, the drones, even this really cute mech, which is a walking death machine. The Arctic mission is hilarious because it's not challenging at all. <laughs> you can launch infinite mortars throughout the whole mission. Yeah, the gameplay is fantastic. And if you ask me though, the game really does shine when you're playing online. It really is a third person battlefield clone. And it's not a bad thing. You have the assault class, you have the sniper class, and you have an engineer class. Con Quest mode, which is my favorite mode, has multiple objectives within the match. It really is a team focused game. If you don't have a mic and you're not communicating with your team, Good it's luck. really easy to die because the snipers have active cam over the most part. People can customize their guns within matches. We'll get into the connect features in a second. So it really is team focused and you have to take out a specified target. You have to hack something. You have to hack an EMP. And you play as the elite US squad or the ghost team or the Russian splinter group called Bodark. It is really well thought out. So I do like the multiplayer, like you said. There is this one thing I do feel that's missing. I prefer deathmatch scenarios. I'm not a big fan of objective-based gameplay mm -hmm. and that's all you have in this game and wanted to just play a game without thinking about disarming a bomb or whatever but playing it is fun. Now before I move into the weapon customization you can play the single-player mission co-op and there's also guerrilla mode. See the problem with that is yes you 
can play a co-op. It's really fun. It's just really weird. You have to set up private lobbies with your friends, which if they have the game, fine. There's no Xbox Live lobbies. So I literally spent 20 minutes when I first got the game trying to play with randoms and you can't because we kind of suck. We do suck. Gorilla mode now obviously is the requisite horde mode. It has a slight future soldier twist in it. So whether it be a stealth mission, so don't set up any alarms or protect an HQ. We play the first 15, 20 missions and it gets really difficult. Their weapon drops, you can use the sync shot system. So it's okay. I much rather play the multiplayer mode. But again, this lack of general multiplayer lobbies seems like a big oversight. I'll disagree with you. I actually prefer playing the guerrilla mode as opposed to playing the multiplayer. Now, like you mentioned, you can customize your weapons. And one of the cool things about this is that you can really get into the nitty gritty of your weapon, zoom into the type of scope, the type of attachments you're using. Gas chamber, the muzzle, the weight, the paint even. Like there's a lot of options you can do to customize your weapons here. And one really cool thing that Ubisoft included is the use of the Kinect to actually do this. Kind of feels like you're living the minority reports. <laughs> It's awesome. Now, listen, I didn't use it as much as I should have used it. It's awesome, but... The problem with the Kinect is the fact that you do need the space to use it, and I don't have that much space in my room to really play around with it. So it's a cool feature. I tried it, but I stuck to the controller for the most part. You can actually do it within a match. You can customize your weapons, and you can even do it between matches, but you have 60 seconds, and every time I had to do it, I had to readjust my position for the Kinect, so I just skipped it. It's much quicker to use the controller. So it's a cool feature. There's a lot of customization put into gunsmithing. It's just better to use the controller, I found because it's just more straightforward. Now as a whole, you know, obviously Ubisoft puts a lot of effort into the AV aspect of things. I'll be very honest, the very first cutscene of Ghost Recon for the 360 is not that impressive. You are in, inside a Humvee. There's some muddy textures, yeah. the frame rate is so, so. It's a pretty game. There's just some really, really strange decisions that Ubisoft made. The first one I'm gonna point out, it just seems that there is this weird filter over the screen at all times. In the brightly lit scenes where you're in the day or in the Arctic or Africa or Russia, what have you, it looks great. The night scenes, when you have your magnetic view or your heat thermal view, has this weird artifacting. But my God, the lip syncing? Man, that British reporter? Okay, listen, to Ubisoft's credit, it's not everywhere. It's the normal cutscenes are fine when you're looking at your main characters talking. It's all good and well done. It's towards the end of the game. They have this cutscene with this British reporter. It's not synced at all, at all. So some strange design decisions. You are playing as this elite squad and in all the missions well, they're covered from top to bottom So you don't really see who they are and for the first few missions I didn't know who was who so you got Kozak, you have Pepper, you have 30 and then you have Ghost, um, lead. Ghost lead, right? There's these cutscenes in between each mission don't relate to the main story But it does put a face behind these characters They're not getting credit for the work they're doing because they're hidden amongst regular US Army Rangers So it's kind of cool to see them grow as characters. I think the cutscenes were cool I would have preferred it though if we're when I'm actually playing a mission, I knew who the hell I was playing with. I think most cases it's Kozak. I'm assuming it's Kozak because towards the end you do play with Kozak for the most part. But listen, overall, this is a great game. The story kind of weak, kind of uh, generic. No, the story is absolutely the worst part about it, but the gameplay more than makes up. If you're playing Ghost Recon, the single player will not hold you for the greatest time. Play through it just to, to see what happens with the story. I'm really disappointed there's no twist like there was at Rainbow Six. It really falls apart at the end, but the multiplayer holds up. If you like class objective-based gameplay, unfortunately he didn't. The multiplayer is the strongest point in the game. I know there's support coming. We welcome back to Ghost Recon series. We're out. Thanks for watching, we hope you enjoyed the show. If you already played it, what did you think of Ghost Recon Future Soldier? Leave your comments below and while you're at it, what did you think about all the Ubisoft games announced at E3 2012? Subscribe and follow us at The Game and Nerds on Twitter and visit our website at thegameandnerds.com. We'll see you next time on The Game and Nerds. Taking the battle in the near future and <sighs> damn it, damn it! Oh, that's the biggest piss off of all time. Okay. Um, it has a slight future shoulder twist in it. <coughs> a Ubisoft multi studio title called Ghost Recon Future Shoulder. And the first blooper. <laughs> this is not good. I might say Future Shoulder a lot. Oh dear. Ghost Recon Future Soldier. Just take that and paste it over. <laughs>